So when I do episodes of this podcast, I try to think of a catchy, cute little um, phrase or name or something to, uh, to for the title of the podcast. And at first I was going to say we got flaccoed, but then, but then after the snap thing happened, I decided to call this, Oh snap. (laughs) (laughs) Basically the game. Oh, where do we begin? Um, I, well, you know, if, if, if our podcast is going to go like all four quarters, the first two, First, the first and second quarter of this podcast is going to suck. And then the third and fourth quarter is going to be pretty good. Um, you know, it, I saw people blaming Justin Fields, which I had to laugh because he was probably like the fourth or fifth reason that they <laughs> lost. I mean, he, I mean, if they would have won that game, we're sitting here tonight talking about the progression of him because, right, uh, 22 to 34, 312 yards, uh, ran for two touchdowns, threw for one. That's a pretty good day. Uh, yeah. I don't care if we would have brought Russell Wales and then we were just joking about Sam Darnold. Um, that's a pretty good day, but you know, let's get to the offensive line got just bullied uh, in that, that first half um, didn't look great. The penalties were atrocious. Uh, I, you know, I was watching Twitter I and mean, he was exploding with, you know, pool Prodwick Jones. Now, I mean, like, He's starting to get a following that's not a good following. Um, and he's responding to people on Twitter? Dude, what are you doing? Right. You just yeah. don't do that. No, it's like uh, I was at the Penn State game this weekend, and uh, Illinois' coach last week was saying, I don't even know what a whiteout is, uh, whiteout energy, whatever that means. I'm like, you <laughs> are you that stupid? And – They've done that before, but usually there's only one white out during the year. And I was there and 109,000 fans and everybody wore white. What do you and mean so, you don't know what a white out is? The White House has been the right. thing for like 20 years. It's yeah. a famous, especially it's a famous thing at Penn State. It's like one right. of their big things. So, how, you, how can you say something like that, you dummy? So I guess I, it, it, I, I agree. It's got to be hard, but you don't. Don't feed into the crap on social media, man, because you're just going to get. Yeah, it's not. It's, there's not no good. benefit to it. There's no benefit to responding to trolls. No, none, no. none. There's just. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, you already I mean, your job is to focus, man. I mean, I'm sorry, but you're being paid a lot of money uh, to come in here. I know it's playing football, but it is, you know, you are paying, being paid a lot of money to do your best and focus. And, um, you know, AB used to get on social media. And you see how that turned out. Uh, <laughs> and he didn't do that until he started going, woo, you know, right. and like, right. uh, I can't do it like Kramer does it. But, uh, you know, um, he blocked me. Yeah, I think I think Antonio Brown blocked me. Did he? I don't know <laughs> why. I think I told him several Speaking times. Of he to those deserves guys to be in jail and horrible things up to him. But still, like, he blocked me. <laughs> no, um, you know, it, it just was one of those deals where, look, anytime you're down 17, nothing, I don't care. You know, I see it on, on Friday nights in, in high school football, Joe. You, 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 a team comes out, and they have a bad half, and you're sitting there like, wow, they're capable, but it's it's harder. And the offense, as good as Fields played, and they did well, they haven't really been built in the last few years to overcome a 17-point difference. I guess we were spoiled. I think when you had Ben in there, it was tough, but we all kind of still thought it was possible if we got in a 17-0 hole with Ben at the helm. Um but I got to say, Fields came through, you know, so you can't be blaming Justin Fields. I, I put it, a, I put a tweet out uh, and I wasn't done doing it and it loaded like, you know, I, I'd like to see Russell Wilson. Uh, no, no, no. I wasn't saying <laughs> I want to see. It was you want to see Russell Wilson, question mark. And um, no, uh, Fields is a guy. Uh, he didn't do anything yesterday that I felt really contributed to the loss. You know, you could talk, you want to talk about Najee Harris, Najee Harris, 13 carries and had 19 yards. Um, Did not look good doing it. Uh, Offensive line didn't do well. Um, You know, he had three catches for 54 yards. So that was, that was much better. But uh, yeah, Harris didn't look great yesterday. A lot of the guys, you know, uh, and Pickens, we, we saw Pickens kind of revert to what we've seen Pickens do. He goes over there. He's slamming his helmet. 
He's, you know, doing the drama thing. And, and honestly, uh, if we're going to pick on him, maybe we shouldn't. But Broderick Jones is the one that went over and pulled him aside and said, hey, look, yeah, you got to calm down. So kudos to Jones there. Um, so, of yeah. Of all um, the people, a rookie, a right. rookie who two games ago was so bad that they pulled him in the middle of the drive because he basically single-handedly sabotaged that drive. Right, and and he's the one that shows maturity to, to talk to him and, and and calm Pickens down. Yeah, um, but I I thought other than that, you know, it wasn't bad. I mean, seven passes to Pickens, who had a great game. The only thing missing there was a touchdown, but Muth had five receptions, sixty yards, a touchdown. You know, so there was everything there. It's just when you in the NFL, it's just really hard to dig yourself out of a hole. I don't care who you are. Uh, I don't, you know, even like the Vikings right now, right? They're four and zero. If you get down like that, it's just it's history shows it's really, really difficult to come back and win, especially when you got 17 points in the first quarter. That's the thing. I, I think the main reason they lost this game was the defense. And yeah. my God, the the way that they started this game with Richardson and, and Jonathan Taylor just going down the field at will doing whatever they wanted. And the defense, the defense looked like, the defense looked like, if, if you ever like slept in or something like that, or 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 didn't set the alarm clock right <laughs> or something like that, you're like, oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh, oh oh oh, we have a game at one. Okay, well, come, come on guys, come, hurry up, hurry up. You know, you just show up at like twelve fifty five or something like that for a one o'clock game. They look like the Steelers look like they were completely unprepared for uh, for this team, even though they played them a year ago with the same coach in the same system. I know it's a different quarterback, but. They just carved him up, and then and then Richardson gets hurt. Which, bro, you're not gonna last. You're not gonna last a minute in this league if you don't protect yourself, you dummy. I, like come on, man. Year. Like, like he's played in eight games and he's been he's knocked out of three of them. Like, like, dude, protect yourself, man. You're you're this all world talent. Protect yourself. But anyway, they 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 he he leaves because of injury, and in comes. 93 year old Joe Flacco and they had no idea what to do with this old stationary statue who just stood there and just carved up the defense and just stood there with all the time in the world and just carved up the defense and threw it wherever he wanted. What the heck? What is this defense doing? Yeah, no, I, I agree. They only had two sacks yesterday, which uh, I thought they would have, have a better day than that. I'm not saying they're going to get 10. But I thought they'd have, you know, at least, you know, four or five. They got nothing in there. Um, it really, to me, was kind of like a fight. They got punched in the mouth right away with a bomb down the down the left side of the, the field. Uh, and then they went to a hurry-up offense. And you were right. The guys were like, well, what do we do? Uh, and they just were removing that ball at will. They had no idea how to do a counterattack. Um, yeah, it, it, was, it was a bad showing. The tackling was poor. Uh, the penalties were awful. Uh, everything it couldn't have been worse. And it, it, you thought at that point, you know, when they have fourteen nothing, I'm thinking, oh my god, this could be twenty eight to three, real easy here. And then they settled down a little bit. Uh, they started playing better football, uh, like they've done in the past. But the thing about the difference between this week and Denver and Atlanta was they were they didn't give up and hemorrhage so many points. Uh, they had their moments where they had their lapses in defense, but they they kind of made up for it. Um, this one here, you know, they started again the second half, not bad. Didn't give up a ton, weren't great, but uh, what they gave up in the first half was was just unsurmountable, right? You take away, let's, let's say you take away at least 10 of those points uh, or even the field goal, uh, and we're either going to overtime or they lose the get or the Colts lose. So that that was it. That first quarter ended up being the big thing. And I, I thought so too, Joe. I was like, okay, your backup comes in. This is where our defense specializes. You give us a backup, we're going to chew him up and spit him out. And here goes Joe Flacco. Like you said, he's 146 years old. He looks like Jimmy Carter out there, but yet he's, you know, carving us up like uh, nobody's business. The only guy really playing well was Deshaun Elliott, who ended up being a leading tackler in the game for the Steelers. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it was it was hard to watch. Um, unfortunately, we, did, we have some breaking news. I'm sorry to interrupt. Pete Rose has just passed away. At age of 83. Wow. Wow. 
we'll that's, we'll talk about him in, in, a, in a minute. That's, there's a, there's that's a lot it. to talk about with, with with Pete Rose, but um, yeah, um, yeah, you know, and and that's just it, Joe. I mean, it's it just like it was a tale of a couple quarters, uh, and the Steelers had a couple good ones, but they also had some bad ones. And um, you know what? You can you can kind of you can you can kind of miss pish posh your way through four quarters of football as long as you're consistent. Uh, with, you know, the foundation of the defense not letting up very much, but that first quarter was so bad, it came back to haunt them. I mean, you gave up 17 points, and the rest of the game, you only gave up 13, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, or, yeah, so. Or, or 10. But, uh, or 10, yeah. But, yeah, um, that is the big difference, is in the first three games, yeah, they would give up some points or stuff, but, but usually when they gave up points, they were Field goals here. The first two, the, the first, you know, the first quarter is 14 to nothing. It yeah. was, you know, that was a huge thing. But then the difference is in the first three games, they absolutely shut out the other team, the Falcons, the Broncos, uh, the Chargers. Right. This time they were still, the Colts were still doing things and they scored 10 points in the fourth quarter. That's the big difference. The, this team, this Steelers defense, is used to giving up. You know, seventeen points is a lot for this for 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 the Steelers defense to give up. But then they give up another ten on top of that. They still let Joe Flacco carve them up, and I just don't understand how that could have happened. I don't understand. Like I, I, I yeah, I don't, ca- I don't, I don't care. You know. Maybe maybe a lot of the players. I mean, there's a lot of turnover in, in the players and stuff. But Mike Tomlin has faced Joe Flacco like a couple dozen times. He should know exactly how to beat him. Yeah, he should. And like I said, I mean, you're right. So the second, third quarter, they only gave up three points. But you know, the ends of the sandwich, if you will, were, were pretty bad. And uh, even though hey, they could have afforded to give up the fourth ten points in the fourth quarter, Joe, if it wasn't for the fact that they choked in that first quarter, giving up two touchdowns. Right. Uh, Jonathan Taylor's a guy where that's where I thought we'd have some success against him. That's where I think you and I both had to winning this game was Jonathan Taylor's one of the best, if not maybe the best and taking a two yard carry and turning into a 12 yard gain. He extends the run better than almost anybody out there, except with the fact maybe Derek Henry, who did it all night last night against the bills. Uh, what do you have? At one point he had four carries for a hundred yards. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> and, um, uh, God, I'm, I'm glad we're not playing the Ravens this week because uh, Derrick Henry would maybe destroy us. But that's the kind of thing. I mean, Jonathan Taylor's the kind of guy who hurt you like that, and he hurt us. 21 carries, 88 yards. They gave, a, gave him the ball a lot. He also caught three play- passes, too, um, for 20 yards. So he had a hundred. He had a 108-yard day against us yesterday, and that killed us. So, um, uh, you know what? It, I, the only thing I can say, Joe, hey, it's week four. If you're going to be like that, do it now. Get that out of your system because you just can't. You're not going to be afforded to do that against the Ravens, um, especially the Ravens. I think we can handle our own with the Browns and the Bengals. Uh, that Bengals defense is so awful. I think would be in that game, but um, yeah, you, you can't afford to do that against teams like the good teams like the Ravens. Uh, you they'll kill you. The Bills too, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was. It's a loss. It probably shouldn't have been a loss, um, and it just ended up. It was so inconsistent. Uh, in, those, in those four quarters, two very good quarters, but then, like you said, two very bad quarters, and that equals to a loss. I I think what possibly happened with the defense is they started to believe their own press clippings. You know, you hear all these things about this is the number one defense in the league and all that, you know, basically everybody talking up the Steelers defense like they're the greatest thing ever. And okay, they were they were very good the first three weeks, but not that not not against the Colts. Holy crap! Um, no, um, no. And now I'm, I'm getting the, the text about Pete Rose. Um, yeah, you know, and that's that's it. And the NFL is a, is a it's a league where if you give up or just rest a little bit. You're gonna get in trouble, no matter who you're playing, with the exception of well, and the Raiders kind of took the Carolina Panthers lately last week, and you saw what happened there. But mm-hmm. um, you know, so even the Carolina Panthers, you can't just do that. And I, I feel like that's this league. That is this yeah. league. Anybody can beat anybody. Literally, any given Sunday is 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 a fact. Anybody can beat anybody. There is no, there's no Vanderbilt. So there's no Kent States in in, in the NFL. Everybody right. is a viable, um, good 
potentially good team. And even if a team is much better than another team, sometimes they only win by like one point or something like that. It's just, it's just a lot of parody. Well, and the defense had a lot of trouble stopping Josh Downs yesterday. Josh Downs is looking like Jerry Rice out there. Uh, you know, he, he had a great game. He averaged 10 yards a catch and Michael Pittman averaged 18 yards a catch he, for 113 yards. He had uh, five receptions. Yeah. Five or six receptions for 113 yards. So they, they got, uh, ate up a little bit in the secondary yesterday. Uh, you know, and again, I said Jonathan Taylor had three catches too. So they put the Steelers back on their heels. Uh, and like you said, I, I think if you would say, okay, Atlanta, Denver, uh, those games there, it, um, it was more or less, okay, we'll give up a little bit, but then we put the clamp on and you're done. Uh, this didn't happen this weekend. Uh, you know, we put the clamp on and it kind of got loose again in the fourth quarter and and that was it. Uh, the offense played well enough, Joe, in the second half. They outscored them 21 to 10 in the second half, but it just, you know, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. I, I, yeah. I, I mean, it is encouraging. We have a lot of encouraging things that the, they all, that they made it so close, you know, scoring right. three touchdowns and three consecutive drives. We haven't seen that in three years, at least. That's, that's yeah. Ben Roethlisberger stuff. So that yeah. was very encouraging. I think, I I think under Matt Cannon, I don't think they scored three three touchdowns in a season some of those years. So this is right. very encouraging. Um, but yeah, I I you know the the I'd say the number one reason was was the defense, but I'd say the number two reason was the coaching. Um, not adjusting to Joe freaking Flacco. That like I, I I just don't understand that. But there were some really questionable decisions like they could have like early in the game they could have um they had a fourth down and they could have tried for like a 58 59 yard field goal in a dome which should be makeable for chris boswell and they didn't even try they punted for some reason that was dumb um at the end of the game uh not calling a timeout when that that whole fiasco happened with the with the with the snap um uh, yeah there's not not the best day for the coaches. They just looked unprepared and, and kind of not what sure what to do. Again, yeah, I, I agree with that too. The coaching was not great. Uh, the execution wasn't very great either, and uh, they still managed to only lose by three points. So you know, you kind of imagine if they're on their A game, probably win that game yesterday. But like you said, for whatever reason, it just wasn't there. It did not go their way. Uh, first quarter or fourth, the, the Pickens fumble. Um, you know that kind of hurt. Uh, Fields fumble. Also, there was two fumbles again from him. He lost one yesterday, so you know um, he wasn't he wasn't you know perfect. Uh, he did he did a few things wrong, and um, you know it, once again, not to make too much of this, but I found I found Najee's Harris's comments after the game kind of curious. You know, he seemed a little frustrated. And then he goes saying, "Well, you know, we're a team. You can't blame Field, Justin Fields." And I, I don't. So, so I, don't know uh, I, I, I saw the interview, and somebody asked him, "Like, what do you think about Justin Fields?" I don't know what. I don't. I don't know what he, what they asked about Justin Fields. Like, he's like, "Why are you talking about just Justin Fields? It's the entire offense." Like, hey, buddy. First of all. <laughs> Uh, maybe play a little bit better if you're going to talk back to people like that. Second of all, the quarterback is by far the most important position on that entire team. So shut the hell up and just answer the damn question. And I got I got a lot to say about Najee. Yeah, because, uh, again, I, I know that there was the turnovers, but Fields looked pretty good. And really, Joe, in, in a Justin Fields' career, there was every reason there for him to resort to being Justin Fields. And he stayed in. He hung in. He's throwing the ball downfield. He's throwing it in the middle of the field. He's throwing it to the left. He's throwing it to the right. He's putting passes out there. He did run when he needed to. Uh, I, I thought there was one. I think the first trip into the end zone when he went down there, he had he did have uh, Pickens wide open on a slant or on a cross pattern on his right, and he just kind of ran it in. Uh, the second one he ran in, I mean, he took a hit doing it too, right? Ooh, that was a brutal uh, hit. And so, but you know, hey, he scored, and I thought too, and I kind of rewound it and watched. I mean, uh, Pickens was the first one over there, hugging him and, and cheering him, and so it seemed like uh, the team was behind him and okay with him running it in, you know, and everything like that. Because I guess you could say, well, 
you know, he he just he's running in because he doesn't know what to do. But I think you know he he did he was doing exactly what he needed to do, not turn over the ball. And again, he's looked good in the pocket. Um, he has done what he's needed to do. So yeah, I like I said, if there's a list of reasons they lost, he's way down there. Uh, I think if Pickens is, is I think if Pickens is going to be there. happy, it's because uh, there were some of those balls that 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 Fields threw to him were just gorgeous. Like and right in the hands too. Like, oh my god! Like, like he has to be, you know, after going through the hell of the last two years, he has to love that he actually has a quarterback that can actually get him the ball. Yeah, I mean, he's and and that's the thing. You take uh, Najee right now; he has sixty eight carries. He only has two hundred twenty eight yards. He's averaging just barely over three yards per carry. No touchdowns. Um. I think the blocking to okay wasn't good Sunday, but the blocking has been good enough. The other three games where I would have thought he would have had a little bit more by now. Um, honestly, I've been very unimpressed. You're in a contract year, you know, you want to be one of the best. You say you're one of the best and, and all that stuff. But I'm telling you right now, you're no Jonathan Taylor. You're no Derrick Henry. No, uh, sorry, no. kid. But you know, I, I'm not even sure you're a James Conner right now. Um, you know what? They would have been better off if they just kept Connor. But right. Th- th- but the thing that is most damning of Najee is there's there's a difference between when Najee gets to the ball and when Jalen Warren gets the ball. And in this last game, when Cordero Patterson got the ball, six carries, 43 yards, 7.2 average. Cordero Patterson is a year younger than, than Joe Flacco. Cordero Patterson is only 92 <laughs> years old. And he was bursting through that hole. And that's the problem. That's a problem with Najee. He does not hit the hole hard enough. Jalen Warren does. Patterson does. Najee does not. And Yes, it is wonderful that you want to run over the world. That's cool. It is really pretty, and you get your little scepter with your angry runs, and it is actually very impressive. But you gotta hit the hole harder, dude. It's it's, it's clearly something wrong with him because the other running backs are doing much better. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's like he's. We said in the beginning of the year. I mean, he is somehow miraculously, and to his credit, averaged about a thousand yards. A season, uh, which is which, pretty much one out of running back. Uh, and his his defense, some of the O line's been horrible. But you kind of have to wonder, Joe. Like you're right. If you'd be hitting those holes harder and running like he could, or we thought he could, he might be averaging fourteen hundred yards a season instead of just a thousand. Uh, and I I agree. I it's not going to look good on him if Jalen Warren does come back and he starts you know moving that ball because I have a feeling right now. Uh, the way this offense is going is if we're, if he were to come in and start outperforming Harris, he might get more carries than Harris. Right. Uh, I, right. They have no reason to give the ball more ball to Harris if he starts outperforming him. Now, if Najee starts picking it up, but yeah, um, Najee was definitely I would say top three. Of the reasons that I didn't want to say that they lost. I just think he was one of the three reasons they could have been better, and he just flat out didn't execute yesterday at all. Let's talk about the offensive line. Uh, the past couple years, I don't think they had one starter that got hurt. This year, it's been it's been a disaster. Left tackle, you have Dan Moore, supposed to be Broderick Jones, but still okay. Dan Moore, he's still a starter. Okay, left guard supposed to be Isaac Samalo, he's been hurt. A uh, center, Frazier, great, but he's a rookie. Right guard, James Daniels. He's probably been their best offensive line. Oh, gone for the year. Uh, right tackle was supposed to be Fa- Fao Tanu. He's gone for the year. This 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 offensive line has been decimated with injuries, and you guys you gotta have like guys like Mason McCormick in there now, and this Ryan McCollum who who apparently sucks, and Spencer Anderson, and all these backups, and it's just. It's it's right now. It's just the state of the offensive line is just not good. No, and and that was one uh, area where I have never been uh, happy. I think the offensive line coach is horrible. Uh, I I do. I don't think he's any good. I don't know why he's still there. Um, I don't think he should have been in the first place. And it's it's an old song, but they have never recovered 
since uh, losing Mike Munchak. Mike Munchak. They just haven't. Yeah. It's been awful. It's been old. It's been filled with holes. Uh, it's not where it used to be. Now, I think the the I think they've drafted well. I mean, they should. Ha- I mean, they should have two of the top tackles in in the game. You know, they they really should. I mean, that's right now. I know they didn't look great last night, but part of the reason the Bills have been kicking ass and the Chiefs, uh, they have they have two sets of great tackles. So the Steelers are doing what they they're doing what they should on paper, but it's not working. Um, and yeah, I think that guy's got to be on the chopping block. I, I don't know why in the world he hasn't been. And now they're in trouble, right, Joe? I mean, they're they're getting now. You're probably calling guys off the practice squad. You're probably looking for someone floating out there. Yeah, because I mean, it's it. They're they're hurting. They're they're not in a good way. Yeah. Um. So now comes to our weekly. What the hell do we do with Russell Wilson? Uh, question. Um, yeah. What the hell do we do with Russell Wilson? I was I was joking when it was you know when it was seventeen nothing that Russell Wilson was going to make a miraculous recovery <laughs> from his calf injury, um, and then I think was it you that had the thing of uh, uh, it's like hey hey coach I feel better that you just start beating on his leg or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, with Vince, Vince, Vince yeah, man, and Stone Cold. We could do a, a podcast on the Vince McMahon documentary a lot. You've been well, watching that. I'm just I'm just finishing it now and I'm I you know what? I love I, I love any wrestling documentary, but I've re- seen the same damn thing. Like I, I like if I have to see the Monday Night Wars one more time, dear God, come on. Oh, can we get some new material? It's like this is the his it was basically the history of wrestling. I know the history. I, I haven't seen too much new from this, but I, but I haven't finished it. So, and, and every time I see Vince McMahon, I just want to throw up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not quite finished yet. I'm in episode five, but it's been interesting to say the least with him. Uh, but no, that I, I did. I thought of immediately like, yeah, when Stone Cold's all, I'll take care of it. Nurse. And he jumps on there and starts punching him. And he, and the best part was when he whacked him with the bed. Pan. The bed pan. And I don't know. If they planned that, but he must have hit him right now because you hear bong. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, to his credit, nobody played a bad guy as good as Vince McMahon did. Um, but yeah, here we are. And um, the only thing it does worry me a little bit, and he's just coming off of what I was a pretty good game, was if that offensive line does get depleted, uh, then he's back to where he was in Chicago, where he had crap offensive lines. And, uh, you know, he really couldn't stay in the pocket because the pocket collapsed every day. Right, time he dropped right. back. And that is where it's hard to coach out of a young kid like like Justin Fields is like, don't run when you can, you know, you can run actually much better. Than some of like half your teammates, you can run like a deer. You know, I think you see Lamar Jackson do that. Uh, it's always you never know what you're going to get with Lamar Jackson. Either he does a great game like he did the other night. Uh, or he has those games too, Joe, where sometimes I think he gets flustered and then he runs when he shouldn't and this, that, and the other thing. But uh, 10 yards is a lot in the NFL. When, you, when you're a mobile quarterback in college, it's, you know, unless you're going up against a really good defense with quick kids, you can make up 10 yards pretty quick. In the NFL, it's hard to get 10 yards running. Um, yeah. So that would be my concern going against uh, Dallas, although – Dallas has been one of the worst run defenses in the league this year. Yeah, so, so were the Colts. How'd that work? <laughs> I know. So I, I just, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I would love to see a game next week where we win again somewhere in the 20s and Najee has a big game. Uh, I, I would be, uh, you know, I know you and I have been hitting the kid pretty hard tonight, but I, I'd be the first one as happy as hell to see him go a buck 15, buck 20, and two touchdowns. I'd love it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, catch, you know, uh, uh, the passing. He did great out of the backfield today with catching the ball. That's what I would love to see. And I think they need that balance. And he's not providing that right now. Again, the offensive line, little question, but they've, they've been, for the so, so far this year, they've been blocking pretty well. The... And Dallas, Dallas yeah. has a lot to prove in that game. Um. But Dallas is probably going to be without their two best defensive players. We're catching Dallas without Mike, uh, Micah Parsons and uh, 
and uh, the other the other really good defensive guys. So I think that might be a a, a benefit. I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna uh, be it's gonna be fun. Demarcus Lawrence. Demarcus yeah. Ware. Demarcus yeah. Lawrence. Lawrence. Uh, Demarcus Ware. Demarcus. One Lawrence. of the Demarcuses. <laughs> right. Um. But they Dallas has given up. You know, forty four points. They gave up twenty eight points to the Ravens. They gave forty four up to the Saints. Um. You know, they gave seventeen up to the Browns. And then, uh, uh yeah. I. I mean. They beat the Giants on Monday um, or Thursday night, which nobody watched. Except, I thought this was fun. I think the total attendance this weekend for the Giants and Jets was like somewhere around like you know a hundred and some thousand or whatever it was, and they got to see their team score zero touchdowns, none from the Giants, none from the Jets. You think I we don't... got it bad? The Jets lost to the Denver Broncos. When I mean, the Broncos look like world beaters since we uh, <laughs> like Bo Nix is like doing good. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it, and I, you look at our schedule, Dallas goes against us. Then they get the lions, then the 49ers and then the Falcons team. It's not ended up being like you said, not a bad team. Uh, they're competing in that AFC South. So yeah, you know, they have to hopefully figure a way to have the offensive line give him fields protection this coming week. That's an eight o'clock game. It's prime time. It's in Pittsburgh. Crowd should be fired up. Um, so yeah, it's, they need a rebound win. Um, I, I have a feeling like if they were to lose this game, it, it could be the start of a bad streak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dak, Dak Prescott, he's he's the real deal. CeeDee Lamb, maybe number two, maybe number three wide receiver in the in the game. Uh right. Defense better, better. I think the defense was embarrassed, and I think they will come back in a big way. I uh, think so too. I think so. I, I think I think that's you know that, that provides hope. And prime time, it's a it's a different animal, and it and it certainly helps when that prime time game is at home. So yeah, and that we'll is, if you look at us, I think it sets us up in the opposite way. You beat Dallas, uh, then you go to the Raiders, and I think they're very beatable. Um, the Jets' defense will keep it honest. That could be a really, like, 15-13 to 13 game. Um, but we should be able to keep their offense in check. Uh, and then we have the Giants, so we have a back-to-back -back kind of a Billy Joel thing going on, New York or Frank Sinatra, if you want to New look York, at New York, New York. <laughs> um so yeah, so I mean they they are in position to do it, but um, they need a they need a much more complete performance, Joe, because that's the story of this Indianapolis game. They didn't have a complete performance. They had two good quarters, which is the meat of the sandwich, and then the actual bread sucked. <laughs> it was stale. Yeah. It was moldy. Whatever you want to say, um, wasn't good. Cost them. My fear going into the season was that the the team would start out slow because. They have to figure things out, especially the offense. And uh, it's to, to me, it's a pleasant surprise that they've been three and one. I, for, I forget what you predicted. Uh, you know, I, I think you predicted like two and two or three and one or something like that. But uh, I think it's a pleasant surprise. And I think there's a lot more promising things. You know, you would hope that maybe they would learn not to snap the damn ball off the quarterback's head, which, you know, I've heard all day, like whose fault is it? Whose fault is it? Apparently the, 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 it was Justin Fields fault or whatever, but who cares? It's been happening for the past month, month or so. Just fix it guys. Like, I, like I don't understand how this is still happening. So you hope they can, they can work out the kinks and, and just work it out. And, uh, but just please nobody else on the offensive it's, line. Hurts. It's just, I mean, again, not to be, but you saw kind of a repeat performance last night if you watched that Bills and Ravens game, because I mean, they just started kicking a Raven, uh, the Bills' ass right from the start, and then I think they only scored ten points in the second half. But the damage was done in the first half, and the Bills were so shell shocked, you know. And that's the kind of thing you just got to avoid. And our defense is what it's supposed to be doing that, and um, yeah, you know, and. Just wasn't just undoing, you know, that that just killed them and they just weren't able to recover. And then the turnovers in the second half, like you said, um, you just can't do that. And uh, I, I did enjoy the crowd, it seemed like it was fairly half and half. There were a lot of cheers when the Steelers did well, but the Colts fans were there too. I, I'm i gonna call it the Muth Index. You could <laughs> tell 
how strong of a of a Steelers crowd it is in an away game when Frymouth catches the ball and you hear Mooth. If you right. hear if you hear a lot of Mooth, then you know there's a lot of Steelers fans there. It's it's so funny. It's just so funny. Just, you, no matter what, you can hear that. Yeah, the same way with Heath and and I remember you remember back if we go back to when you and I were in our younger days when um you'd hear the Moose chants or Derek Johnson with the Cowboys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, uh, the Moose Index, I love it. Got to copyright that one. Um, to go the the other um the other thing that I heard I think from from Tim Benz, th- it's actually a somebody made you know, the T T T G typical Tomlin trap game. And this, yeah. <laughs> this is, we were supposed to win, but it's that typical Tomlin trap game. You get you get at least one of those uh, every season, so maybe you this can make, be- uh, yeah, like you know, and I know in being a season ticket holder with the Penguins, at least well they used to. They I don't think they do anymore, but they'd always put like companion DVD sets. Like the one year was the greatest Mario games. The one year was like okay. the greatest ends moments. You could make a companion set. Like five these this set of like just, a, just all games. the Tomlin trap games. Yeah. Like, you know, we here we lost to the Carolina Panthers and all the Raiders losses those years. Ooh. Um just Ooh. just losses that we never should have lost brutal. games. Um yeah. and that was that would have been right on the DVD, you know, game yeah. three, disc four. <laughs> that uh that that would have been it. So um but what is it with everybody dying all of a sudden? Manu Bull earlier today, Pete oh, yeah, Rose, crazy. Chris Christopherson. Uh, there's been like five Maggie people. Smith. Maggie Smith, like all these people dying all of a sudden. What? Mm-hmm. What, what? What? They don't want to vote. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but uh, <laughs> well, they might vote with the the uh, <laughs> you know, joke that, uh, that, uh, Maggie Smith voted Dang. for Kamala Harris. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, folks, we're not getting into politics. It's just a, it's a, uh, what do you want to call it? Just a, uh, it's a joke. It's we're joking. That stereotype. It's funny, but no, um, yeah, you know, I was sad to see about Dame Maggie Smith. I mean, and obviously all the Harry Potter fans are are, are having a rough one with that one. But yeah, so Mutombo today and, and Pete Rose. Uh, so I got to see Derek Mutombo play twice uh, live, and I always say it's funny with the NBA because you know there's an NBA team here in Pittsburgh, so we don't like you know, but um. Sometimes it's you can't appreciate how good those guys are unless you're there and you see the height. TV doesn't do it justice always. In I've I've never been to an NBA game. Yeah. It must be amazing. But, uh, Matumbo was like, I mean, they they played the Bulls. I was in Chicago for that, uh, and then it was a uh, it was a West Coast game. I think they played like the Kings or something. And he he um he was just you know incredible with 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 the way. For a big as of a man he was, and to move like that, you know, and it, it was just, uh, you know, you see, you know, in wrestling sometimes, with like guys like The Undertaker or, or, uh, you know, just like, wow, these guys are six eight, six ten, and they are, you know, and and, and so, but Matumbo could, I think the one game he had like twenty blocks. I mean, it, it was almost effortless, you know. It just seemed like it wasn't like you. He was up there, and like you know, I mean, it was just you know, block lot i mean it was just like wow um pete rose we met him in vegas once and there oh, always wow. seems to be a interesting thing with pete rose either he's you know mean asshole excuse my language or he's he was a nice guy he was nice to us i don't know what to say i mean it was we talked about uh pittsburgh for a while and he actually um said you know we were the big red machine we were the best team in the 70s he said but people forget you guys won two world series in the seventies. And he said, you guys, you know, won almost as many games in that decade as we did. He said, you know, and, and everyone's talking about all these other teams and they forget or sometimes or whatever, maybe they don't forget. He said, either way, he goes, you know, we, we always, uh, that was always a team that we were, you know, had to get up for because it was always so well coached and so well played. So he, he actually, he actually, I don't know. I mean, that was, that was after we actually got an, an autograph from him. Um, so it wasn't like he was trying to, you know, get more money or anything. Uh, so it was an interesting conversation he had. He he was a big fan of Manny Sanguian, uh, he he told us. So, um, yeah, and then the other thing is I remember one year we went out uh, to see the, the uh, Cardinals play the, the Reds in Cincinnati. And um, 
we did a stadium tour. We like to do that, you know, sometimes we go visit oh, the stadium. Oh, those are great. Yeah. So this guy tours us around Cincinnati and um <laughs> and we get to the end and they had a Pete Rose store there. But it was it wasn't sanctioned by the MLB, you know, because he's, you know, banned from baseball. So it was like I forget how they worked it in there, but you know, it was a Pete Rose store, but it didn't have any MLB logos or anything in it. And so one guy in the tour says you know, what do you think about, you know, everything that happened with, with Pete Rose and how he betted in baseball and gambled and everything. And the guy, the tour guy was like, well, that, that, you know, that didn't really happen because he, I mean, it was just like, I, I think about the, uh, you're really going to have to be a, a, um, pop junkie, but there's a, um, family guy episode where Stewie and Brian, like you're there in a the little transporter that Stewie has and they go, they go on some bus tour through Germany and the two in the tour of Germany, and I get to the point where there was World War II, and he said, nothing happened in World War II. Nothing happened here. Keep going. <laughs> it, was like, it was the same thing. Like, what do you mean he didn't? What do you, like, he was totally like, oh, that was a bunch of, he shouldn't have been banned, and that nothing really happened. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, he, even, he even said it happened. Um, right. So that was, <laughs> he um, would sign base. He would sign things like, sorry, I bet on baseball. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, and so, like, in Cincinnati, I mean, he's they got to be breaking in their hearts tonight because that guy is he is our he is their Mario Lemieux, their Franco yeah. Harris, their yeah. Mean Joe Green. He's, he was um, he was legendary. Yeah, and it, it isn't even close. Uh, I mean, I, nobody, not no Bengal, nothing. I I understand why he's banned, and when people say, "Well, he should never, he should be allowed back in or whatever," it's like, if you if you bet on baseball, you're basically turning it into pro wrestling. You're basically making it almost predetermined. You just can't do it. It's the one cardinal sin. But it is a damn shame between him and all like Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, and all that. It is a damn shame that they are not in the Hall of Fame. That is not a real Hall of Fame if you don't have the best players in it. And Pete Rose was if not the best hitter of all time, one of like, he's in, he's in top five. And for him not to be in the hall of fame, put him in the hall of fame and just explains like, yeah, well, this is, this is also what happened, but he still, it doesn't take away his accomplishments as a hitter, which were amazing. Yeah. I mean, he was Charlie, Charlie hustle. You know I mean? He was a guy that would run out first base and, uh, Normally would on, spike on a- the baseball. He literally spiked the baseball, like on, like on the AstroTurf, <laughs> like it was a football. Yeah. You know, and, and you and I are old enough. I remember his days with the Phillies, right? You know, he, that's he what I remember. Like, the Phillies and the Expos is what I remember. You know, I mean, for God's sakes, you had at one point you had Matt or Mike Schmidt and Pete Rose. Like, holy crap. He went um, from one super team to the other. That was a that was a really good uh, Phillies team with Mike Schmidt, right. Steve Carlton. Uh, I think Greg Luzinski was in there. That was a, that was a really mm-hmm. good team, too. And then he goes and does that thing with the Expos. And then he then he bring him back to the Reds where, where they, he should have been in the first place. But uh yeah, you know, it, I think Pete's oh, it was his own worst enemy a lot of times too, though, Joe. You know, I have a I have a young son who I, who I love very much, and you know, I try to do best by him being a dad and teach him right from wrong. And if we get to some point where he ever says to me, "Dad, who is Pete Rose?" I'll say, "A, he was a great baseball player, but B, he was a world class liar." Um, you know, and if you watch, it was a very well done. I was on HBO or Netflix, the Pete Rose documentary. I don't know which one it was on, but it was a really good documentary. And even in that documentary, all these years later. Like they're talking about him, they're talking about the, you know, did he did he get involved with the drugs or steroids or something like that? And he said, nope, never did there. And then they show him footage of him being in the gym with his guy. And I mean, like, <laughs> he, you know, he totally got caught. I mean, it's like, yeah. and I think that's where a lot of those guys, you just never knew anymore, like what he was saying. Like, you know, sometimes you lie so much, you don't even know who you are anymore. And I think, I think Pete's lying hurt him the most i really do i think if maybe he would have came right out and said you know what i did bet on these things i did bet on some of these games i was wrong um you know if you want to suspend me or whatever i think if he did that i think things would be a little bit different i think he he may not be totally welcome in but i think at least the public would 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 like him more or, you know, understand them more. We all make mistakes. We all right. have done stupid things. We've all done things we regret. But yeah. own up to it. Uh, be accountable. Show show some some regret. Show show some humility. But he never, ever did anything close to that. Never. Yeah, and he just never was honest about that. When you're not honest about it and they have you on it, um, you don't... <sighs> 
there are no more lifelines. I mean, you got to just, yeah. and I think you're right. I think, okay. Cause that was in 89, I believe. Yeah. So, and then he spent the better part of the nineties saying never happened. Uh, you know, you know, free Pete now. And then he comes around, turns around and says, okay, you know what? It did happen. Well then it would have been okay if you would have done that in 1990 or 91, but not in like whatever that was like 2012 or 2011 when he came out. And then, you know, and that's, that's to, you know, not that he's real popular, but that to Faye Vincent and the other baseball commissioners, Bud Zillig to their defense, like, how the hell do I even trust this guy? You know, I don't know right. what he's saying, what he did. And, and, you know, there was that and, and whatnot. And, um, but to your point, all that aside, he should be in the hall of fame without question because he's still one of the best, best hitters of all time. You know, Joe, other than, I mean, outside of the Pittsburgh no, Norman culture, right? Like, you know, you grew up in Pittsburgh. You knew who Mean Joe Green was, the co commercial, and Franco, Terry. Um, for you and me, uh, not everybody, Lemieux, um, Roberto, um, Willie, Stargell. Um, but outside of him, I think it was like Pete Rose and maybe Richard Petty. We're only two people I was aware of that were athletes outside of Pittsburgh. You know, they were that big that you knew. Oh, Richard Petty. Yeah, he drives a race car, the 43, the red and blue car. Oh, Pete Rose. Yeah, he plays for the Reds. Pete He's Rose was doing national commercials too. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I could maybe the 85 Bears kind of after. But, I mean, I remember in the early 80s, like outside of those guys in Pittsburgh, you didn't know anybody other than Pittsburgh. You know, it's a new Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. wait, yeah, Pete Rose. I know Pete Rose plays for. Right. Absolutely. I can tell you right. Pete Rose plays for. Yeah. Um, that's how big he was and how far reaching his his ability was. You know what else I just remembered he was remembered for? Showing up to WrestleMania every year getting Tombstone Power Driver from Kane. <laughs> oh my god, that's right. Oh I he, forgot about I think that. the first year he just showed up as himself and Kane just showed up and, and, and gave him power driver. But then he like dressed as a San Diego chicken and all this other stuff. <laughs> like every right. year he would just come out there and get destroyed by Kane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. Yeah. Good old Pete Rose. Oh my yep. God. <laughs> Kane. I just saw, um, uh, Joe, what's, what's Kane's real name? Glenn Jacobs. Um, yeah. And, uh, now he's been on news a lot, you know, touring is a lot of that destruction from the hurricane was in his territory. So he's like been in his blue jeans. His he is, I believe, there, like, the mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee. I believe. I think so we're like, he, it's Eastern Tennessee where he's from and he's at. And, um, you know, that, so he's been all over the news lately. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's a good memory. I forgot about Pete Rose. What, wasn't Pete Rose like a WrestleMania one or two? Wasn't he like the timekeeper or something, too? I think so. Yeah. 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 So, um, but yeah, man, that, that to me is Pete Rose. Is you just remembered, you knew who he was, and uh, when you're a younger kid in the '80s, growing up in Pittsburgh, you didn't really know. Uh, maybe Nolan Ryan, I guess. But um, that that was it. It was it was Pete Rose. So yeah, I, and I just yeah, I, I, I it's sad. I mean, he's 83, so it shouldn't be a shock. He didn't look like in great health in that documentary. I don't know. I think the documentary was made late last year. Um, oh wow! But uh, there's a, a litany of stuff that followed him, but yeah, Sam Barry Bonds, he should be into. Um, and I think what you'll see, Joe, because I have a couple, I've about three good friends at four, four that vote on the uh, MLB Hall of Fame, and I think you're starting to see the guys that were adamant against the guy like a Barry Bonds or Rafael Palmeiro, uh, not getting in that are going to be slowly retiring, you know, just getting out of it. Um, that's sure interesting that this to see the, the the next generation how they're going to treat that. Uh, right, I think they I think you should. I, I think you should just have them in, but you know, say to me, Barry Bonds is the greatest hit of all time. I, I like my God, they, <laughs> when the bases were loaded, they would rather have an intentional walk th than to face Barry Bonds. They would rather let in a run than to face Barry Bonds. Now consider that when a good hitter you know fails seven out of ten times they would still rather guarantee losing a run than face barry bonds that's how good barry bonds was uh, he's just 
the greatest of all time. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, he took steroids, but but dang, he was still he was he was good as a pirate before this. Yeah, well, <laughs> I still think there'd be a bunch of people listening to this show that are going to be 50 50 on him. They're going to yeah. be right with you, or there's going to be a lot of people like, but he couldn't make the throw in that. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I think that will forever damn him. And then, and also, probably one of the most I don't, I think I looked it up one day, it's like maybe five million views of Jim Leland going off on him and at spring training. Do you ever seen that YouTube version? Oh yeah. Video? Yeah. It's spring training. I mean, just chewing just him out. Up, I'm the manager, you know? And like, I mean, yeah. and Barry was at that time, you know, in the money and trying to do what he had to do. And I just don't know. The one thing with Barry was other than like Andy Van Slyke, he just didn't seem to be endearing towards Pittsburgh as much as, some of the other t- kids and uh, players on that team, Doug Dre Beck, uh, Smiley, Linda, Bob Walk, yeah. um, you know, um, he then- had a chip on his shoulder because, um, you know, his, his dad was Bobby Bonds, and I guess he didn't like how his dad was treated by, you know, certain certain teams or certain people or whatever. But right. also, Bobby Bonilla, I think, got in his ear and told him certain, you know, Bobby Bonilla I think was. So too was a bit of a yeah. malcontent too. So um, yeah, that, that's one thing. And then that's, that's one thing all I've heard is yes. One of the greatest players of all time, but also a massive jerk to just about everyone players, fans, mm-hmm. media, everyone. He just, he was just horrible to everyone. And I think that's also maybe contributing to why he hasn't been in the hall of fame. I'm sure we covered this some point last year, but and any guy in Pittsburgh media or however I covered it would tell you this, a big reason Tom Barrasso wasn't in the hall of fame a long time ago. Cause he was an ass cat. He was not good. He was nice absolutely to horrible he was to horrible. everyone. And, you know, you can say whatever you want about the media. I, I don't even get into a debate on that, but not that we are. But um, when it comes to this kind of stuff, guess who holds your Hall of Fame credentials in their hands? It's like it's like not, work. If you're horrible to a coworker, you can't expect that coworker to do you a favor or whatever. Right. If they get promoted, like, hey, remember me? Right. Yeah, yeah you were a jerk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you just – and that's the way it goes. I don't – I think with baseball, there may be even a retirement thing. Like, I think – I know for sure Ron Cook was one of the guys in the Pittsburgh media who had a vote for years. And I wouldn't be surprised because uh, I know he just retired. Um, if they didn't pull him in tomorrow or one of the upcoming shows to talk about Pete Rose, because I think Ron had pretty good views on Pete yeah. Rose in or out or whatever. But, um yeah, you know, and, and so, but yeah, these voters, like the NFL, I always think it's very interesting. Like Ed Bouchette, and I don't know, if, again, I don't know, I don't know the retirement rules. I, I'm so I can't, I can't say for sure. But for these last 25 years, it was up to Ed Bouchette to get in there in a closed room. It's, and it's, say, it's totally different with football. This in is football, what, there yeah. was only one reporter per team. That right. got the vote. So there was only yep. 32 votes. In so imagine, baseball, I think it's like hundreds of people. It's like, maybe, right. maybe, oh, it maybe, is. It's like 11 right. or 1,400. I think it's 1,400 voters. Um, in the NFL, you're right. Like, so if you pissed off Head Bouchette, you know, right. I mean, <laughs> he might make a, he, he's going to push it. Let's put it this way. He was going to push a lot harder for you if at least you were likable and treated him with respect. Right. I don't think Ed Bouchette, I can't speak for Ed Bouchette, but I don't think Ed Bouchette's going to say, you have to kiss my butt in order for me to get you and no, I don't think he ever was that way. I think he's a very fair, very great reporter, but I think he would do every, I, even if he didn't like a guy, he'll still feel Ed Bouchette would make a case, but um, that's, you just can't bite the hand of BJ, man. It doesn't help out. It certainly didn't help out Tom Barrasso. Uh, yeah, even during Tom his Hall of was... Fame speech, his Hall of Fame speech was like, mm, you know, he took shots a little bit. I mean, yeah, he he should have been in the Hall of Fame like 20 years ago. It took him that long because, yeah, finally people were like, okay, I guess we should let him. <laughs> he was really good. I guess well, we should let him in. But, yeah, he got he probably remember, got delayed. Like, Kenny Reggett had a great glove hand. I mean, it was really good. And if they were going against somebody that was really good off the right half wall on the power play or something like that, they didn't, like, Badger Bob sometimes would go to Kenny. Uh, and so would Scotty Bowman, like, hey, we're going to put Kenny in here because he, that glove save, you know, uh, and I think that pissed Barrasso off. And Tom was just – I love that he got in the Hall of Fame. I love him as a player here, but he just, you know, well-known, you know. And the same yeah, thing with – I, Yeah, I I don't know how 
mean or bad Pete Rose was to the media. It seemed like I thought he was pretty graceful. But, well, actually, no. I remember there was an instance with a girl that asked him something, and he kind of made the remark like, you know, um, why are you even asking that? Were you even alive? You don't even know anything about it. Like, real derogatory, um, you know, uh, masculine kind of a thing. Uh, so, yeah, you just... And I know it's hard, man. I know you just lost, like Najee Harris. I know you just lost. You didn't have a great game. And you got, you know, these things in your face right. uh, within 15 or 20 minutes of you losing a game. It's not easy. I get it. Um, it's not. But you got to find a level of decorum, Joe. That You got to, y- y- yeah. yeah. You, you got you to gotta tone it down. You got to somehow don't, don't let it explode because... It just never and just just don't get on social media. Whatever you do, do not. Just yeah, never the social media thing. Never, Whatever you never, do, never. Do, don't get on social media. And don't read the comments of of, of anything. Just don't. Um, yeah. I, I just remember this thing about Ed Bouchette. This was a year or two ago, and he said something about maybe they should play Mason Rudolph or something like that. And I said. If they played Mason Rudolph now, there would be riots. I don't I don't remember at what point in, in time it was. And he responded, Well, send in the National Guard. <laughs> I can see that. Yep. That's fantastic. Oh, I didn't see that one. I wish I would have. Oh Let my me, god. Well, because I could have and saw it. Yeah. All um, right. Hey, well, I think did on, you to, on the book? Dallas. Did you and What's I that? have him beating? I think you and I had them both beating Dallas. I think we all had him beating Dallas. I, I think so. I think that the, yeah. the I, if I were to guess, the main factor in everybody saying that we would beat Dallas is it's Sunday night, it's at home, and that is a pretty big advantage. I remember like back in the heyday of the Raven Steelers rivalry, they 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 actually complained. It's like. We know we're a marquee matchup, and we know you have us on Sunday nights, and it's always in Pittsburgh. Can you give us a break? Because that's a guaranteed win for Pittsburgh. So can you help us out here? Can you change some things around? So I, th- I think that is a, 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 an advantage. But we don't know what this team is going to be like in prime time. We no, don't know. Um, it's a young, it's a young team that's still trying to figure it out. And hey, we saw on that final drive. Yeah, it would have been great. You know Ben Roethlisberger, that's a guarantee that he would have drove him down for either a field goal or or, or, or a touchdown. So they're they're just not there yet. We'll see. We'll see if they're ready for prime time. We'll see if they're uh we'll see if they're uh Saturday Night Live uh, worthy. I think you're right. Uh, I think one of the things you said earlier was right on. I, I, their their defense often responds to uh when it's critic when it's criticism, I think they go out there. I think they uh, I think it's 21 13, something like that, Steelers. Yeah. So, yeah. With all yeah. the wonderful things that they heard the first three games this week, they're going to hear nothing but mm-hmm. w- what the hell is wrong with you? TJ Watt. We didn't even talk about TJ Watt. TJ Watt was like on a milk carton. It's like he didn't even show up. Like, you know, he's going to respond with a big game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was nowhere to be found. Um, well, yeah. No, he, he he didn't have a great game. Let's put it that way. Did not have a great game. So, none of them. None of them did. So we will see. (laughs) All right, sir. Thank you. All right, Joe. Thank you. Have a good night. You too.